Hey, what's happening? I'm Tim Rydberg. This is God's Grace on Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. So last week we did a video about not settling. Don't settle for anything other than God. That's what I said and it's absolutely true. Now today we're going to talk about emotional chastity. Now why do I bring up last time? Well, because I think emotional chastity is one of the things, one of the great tools that we can use not only to guard the hearts of our friends or acquaintances, you know, from, from heartache or, or, or having your heart broken or something like that. But also, it's a way for us to combat that concept of settling for less than God. Now, why is that? Why, why would that be a thing? Well, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, one of my favorite books ever, I like the Bible more, obviously, but I love this book. And I've read the whole thing. It's a big book, but ironically, it's on like one of the first pages. It's my favorite part. Part 1, Section 1, Chapter 1, Paragraph 27, it says this. The desire for God is written in the human heart because man is created by God and for God. And God never ceases to draw man to himself. Only in God will he find the truth and happiness he never stops searching for. So what do we take away from that? Well, one thing is you're searching. You're looking for happiness. You're looking for God. Let me cut to the chase here, people. I've heard it put this way. There is a God-sized hole in your heart, and only God can fill it. It's just that simple. So we keep looking in all these other places, right? Now here's the problem. If God is the only thing that is going to bring you the ultimate peace, the ultimate happiness, and we know that if we look elsewhere, we're going to be let down, well, here's the problem. What if someone is looking at you? to be that peace? What if someone is looking at you to be that fulfillment? You know, it kind of puts things on its head a little bit, right? Instead of people being like, like you being like, oh, this girl, this guy. Well, what if there's a girl looking at you if you're a guy or a guy looking at, or a guy looking at you if you're a girl, hoping that you are going to be that fulfillment? How are you going to help this person? How are you going to guard their heart? You know, how are you going to do this? Well, you need to first remind them not just with your words, but with your lifestyle, who comes first? Who should come first? And here's the other thing that you'll know that if you really need to start practicing emotional chastity well, and we'll talk about how to do that in just a second, but a great indicator, if you're in, like, if you're having, if you have a crush on someone, right? If you're in like, oh, you really like them, or, you know, maybe you're, you know, hopefully not, but you're in lust, like you really want this person, they're just like so beautiful, right? If you're trying, if you're pursuing someone, here's a question that you need to answer. Will your friends and your family still want to come to your wedding if you guys get married? Because if the answer is no, if you're treating your friends like garbage, if you're treating your family like trash, this is not healthy. If you're, will God be excited about your marriage? Are you honoring him in your relationship with your friend or your boyfriend or girlfriend? Are you honoring him in this? Because if you're not, you need to fix that, all right? So how do we do this? Well, how do we even avoid? Because like chastity, that's like once you're in the relationship, right? Or that's when you're like, you know, like things like you're dealing with the commandment of thou shalt not commit adultery and all the sins that go therein, right? Um, so how do we deal? How do we avoid that in general? Well, emotional chastity. How do we avoid from settling emotional chastity? What is emotional chastity? It's practicing chastity with your emotions, with your thoughts. It's keeping your, your feelings in check and ordered properly. Now, what's a good example of this? Well, coffee in the evening. Okay, I love coffee in the morning. I'm not a morning person. I need to wake up and drink some coffee. That's great. But in the afternoon or evening, especially if I've been drinking a lot of coffee early in the day, coffee dehydrates you. So if I'm thirsty, what do I want? I want water. I don't want coffee. Now, half of chastity is abstinence. Okay, abstaining from either a good or an evil. Something that you should not have at this point in life. Doesn't matter if it's good, doesn't matter if it's bad, it's, it's the timing. So maybe this is, maybe you're meant to be a married person, but right now in life, you're not ready to be married. So maybe you shouldn't date, right? So you're going to abstain from doing what you're not ready to do. So the timing is everything. So at nighttime, it's not the timing for coffee. So you could have just abstained from it and sit there going, I'm not going to drink it. I'm not going to drink it. I'm not going to drink it. It's not good for me. I'm not going to drink it. Well, you could do that. You could live that way, but you're not going to go anywhere. You're just going to sit there like this. Not going to drink it. Not going to drink it. Instead, put it down. That's the abstinence part. But then the, where chastity comes in is where you move on to a good 
that will that will be better for you? Water. I'm actually thirsty, so this is good. So do you see how then what you do is you choose the greater good? What is the greater good? God. He is the greatest good and the only thing that will make you happy. St. Augustine put it like this. He said, I wouldn't have loved the things of this world if they were not in you. I was, look, I, I was looking for you, so I loved those things. But they're not as good as you. In all my desirings, God, I was desiring you. I promise you, the reason that you love your boyfriend or girlfriend so much or you're infatuated with a boy or a girl so much is because you're looking for God. I know because I lived that life. I did that. Okay? And honestly, most of the time, someone got hurt, either me or them. And it breaks my heart that I, that I did that. Like this passage that I read from the catechism, I read that in my early 20s for the first time. I'd heard it from other people, but it didn't sink into my early 20s. I wish I had read it and it sunk in when I was 14. So guys, be real here. Take a step back. Look at your relationships. Look at your life. Are you practicing emotional chastity? And if you're not, start now. Guard the hearts of your friends. Bring everyone to that relationship with Jesus, not just by your words, but by your actions. Put him first. I promise you, you will not regret it. And now once God has your heart and your mind, then he can do some pretty cool stuff, which is what we're going to talk about next week when we discern discernment. I'm stoked about it. Be sure to uh, subscribe to God's Grace on Tuesday. I'd appreciate it. Share this video, other videos with your friends. They need to know this stuff. Your friends need to know this stuff. Whew. Okay, till next time, peace of Jesus to you. God bless.